G'day friends! Uh, welcome to another Tag Tuesday video, uh, a part of the series that I said I was never going to do. <laughs> um, this Tag Tuesday video is featuring my new Alice Digi stamp that's available in my store, my Etsy store. Shameless plug, I know, but you know I love to do it. Um, basically I wanted to show you that the same Digi stamp can be reimagined five different ways. It can actually be re reimagined a million different ways, but I don't have time to do a million, so uh, I'll just do five. <laughs> um, I'm using uh, Alice in Wonderland as the inspiration since uh, this is an Alice tag. Uh, the five characters are going to be from Alice in Wonderland. So, I'm going to explain a bit about what I'm doing and why. Uh, I've got Copic markers here, they're alcohol based markers. This. This particular tag was printed on uh, American Crafts cardstock, so it, uh, it absorbs the, the ink really, really nicely. And I'm using pencil just to go over the top and add some shading and some subtle highlights and details. Uh, I always use a white paint marker to go in and add in the really bold highlights, because uh, that just... I mean... Does anyone not like doing that? I feel like this has become my new favourite step in uh, mixed media art, is the, the time that I get to crack out the white paint marker. I'm using a Derwent one there, the graphic uh, paint marker. It is not my favourite, honestly. I mean, the ink, the, uh, what is it called? The paint, the white paint is really nice and opaque, but the, the well floods so easily. And uh, I don't know if I have any trouble with it on this one, but I know I did five more tags. Uh, that are a part of next week's Tag Tuesday video. The same concept, one digi stamp, five different ways. Uh, but it would just, it just flooded and it kept on like spilling onto the page and it's just really annoying to have to clean that up and it can, can really ruin your work if you get all the way to the end. So uh, I'm not, I'm not super impressed with the graphic uh, white paint marker. I think I'm still all about the, the Posca because that one I've never had a problem with. So uh, yeah, that's just my thoughts on that. Uh, here's some washi tape, some really cool washi tape I got off Amazon, and uh, these are just little mushrooms. I wanted to have the mushrooms kind of hanging from the the top of the tag, so I put them down and sliced them out with a, a craft knife, which is just a great way to turn your washi tapes into little stickers. Um, it's a little fiddly, I probably wouldn't do this all the time, but for this it really worked, so I was happy with that. Uh, yeah, so also I wanted to talk about uh, paper types. I print these digi stamps on all different types of paper. Uh, just to see how they all work differently. I use watercolour, paper, mixed media cardstock, whatever I can shove through the printer, I'll do it. And I use a, an inkjet printer, which uh, isn't ideal if you're going to go over these digi stamps with uh, wet media. But if you let the ink dry properly and let it really sink into the substrate, you can still use watercolour over the top of it and it'll be fine. You just have to make sure it's really, really dry. Alternatively, go and get them laser printed and uh, you'll be completely fine uh, because it won't. Uh, yeah, you won't have any problems with smearing and smudging. Uh, here I'm doing the Queen of Hearts. So the Digi stamps were all printed different sizes because I wanted to show you uh, just how versatile they are. They come with the the head and shoulders, the Alice head and shoulders with the bow, uh, super cute. And they also come with the bodice, which is optional, like an optional overlay if you want to give her the uh, the arms and the little shirt. Um, I just put that in there because I know some people like to uh, do more than just the face. And even myself, I, uh, I actually enjoyed playing with that overlay. Uh, and the purpose of this video really is to show you that you may have one stamp or one digi stamp, but that doesn't mean you, you can only get one look out of it. Uh, if you move a line or you color it differently or, you know, you add things over the top, um, you can completely change the look of the digi stamp and, and the results you get from it. So this is all exactly the same stamp, but there are five different characters from Alice in Wonderland. And, um, and you could just keep going. I mean, you could use all of your own favorite themes. You could uh, turn them all into animals if you want, just give them different animal ears. I don't know. The world's your oyster, basically. Uh, so <laughs> this, um, this is the Queen of Hearts. And you'll see in a, in a second, I think I'm just gonna go over the top of her eyes and bring her eyeliner down. There we go. And that completely changes the mood of this stamp. Suddenly she looks a little more sinister. Uh, you know, that expression is completely different. Uh, adding in darker colors makes her just look a bit more dark. Really basic stuff I'm explaining here, but uh, a lot of people don't realize that you can uh, that you can do all of this with, with just one stamp. And so many of you out there are such avid stampers, and I love it. Uh, if I had the space, obviously I'd have my own stamp collection, but I don't, so I do digi digital stamps anyway. Uh, it just instead of. I have a few stamps, but uh, yeah, I'm, I just, the digital stamps are working for me at the moment. So 
uh, the, I'm just showing you here how I use them. And I, I don't know if people think that that's weird that I use my own digital stamps, but I mean, they came from my hand. Like, this is technically like my, you know, my art. So why would I not use them? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I love, this is because um, I'm lazy and I love to cut out that middle step of actually having to draw the character over and over again. And uh, I put in a lot of time and effort into creating them. So, you know, I want to get the most, I want to get the most out of them. We're all like that with our art supplies, aren't we? And I consider the digital stamps just another supply because they get me from point A to B. Uh, well, they get me from A to Z, cutting out all the steps in between. Um, so yeah, did that make sense? Probably not. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I love in these voiceovers when I ask questions and sometimes I actually feel like I'm going to get a response. All I have is Bianca looking at me like I'm crazy. So uh, yeah, the, the digital stamps are something that I just really, really enjoy using uh, in my butterfly book, in my planners, in my art journals. And uh, I, don't, I don't create a million all at once. I like to uh, create them as I need them and then put them on the Etsy store. Uh, because for me, it's not about supplying, you know, tons and tons of stuff for uh, people to buy. It has to be relevant to what I'm doing. And I want people to be able to follow along and to see how I've used it and, uh, and to be encouraged to use it themselves and find new ways to incorporate it into their work, ways that I hadn't considered before or with themes that I haven't done before. And that's just really fun for me to look at because I feel like at the end we've collaborated on something and, uh, and I haven't had to leave my living room to do it. So, <laughs> Jeez, I don't do myself any favors. I'm not as lazy as I put off on YouTube, trust me. This takes a lot of work to video all this stuff, so I must not be lazy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, this is the uh, the Cheshire Cat. Did I already explain that I use tons of different papers? This is actually just printer copy paper, uh, and I find it it saves a lot of money. If I'm practicing something, if uh, I'm learning a new technique, uh, you can still use printer copy paper, and it won't be the end of the world. It you know it performs differently uh, to expensive papers, but the real trick I can't even remember the quote. Oh goodness. It's, it's not really about the supplies that you have. It's the way that you use them. It's the, the skill that you uh, develop in using them and the mastery of those supplies that's what makes your, uh, your artwork better. It's, that's definitely not the quote that I read. But basically, oh, here, that pen's about to flood. Look, this is not my favorite, the Derwent graphic. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's not about the, uh, you know, the products that you have. It's, it's how good you are at uh, using them and how you develop the skills uh, in using them. And that just takes practice. I know a lot of people like to ask me, like, oh, what did you use to, to, to get this result? And I'm more than happy to share that. But to be honest, that's not really going to work for everybody because there's, there's a level of practice that's gone into how I actually did it or... Uh, how we came together. And even some things like people live in a really humid climate, your watercolors are going to behave differently, uh, your paints are going to behave differently than mine do living in a really dry climate. Do you know what I mean? The way that your products keep, the way that they flow and use, that's all, it's all relative to uh, how you work and where you work and when you work and why you work. Listen to me trying to be all, uh, all knowing and all insightful. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you can work on these digi stamps straight over the top. This one is a really good example for anybody that thinks, uh, well, there's so many lines there, I just kind of have to go with it. If you draw over the top of it and then block in your color and then use, you know, like a really thick black marker or, uh, you know, just paint on really thick black lines to go around your edges, you can create this really fun comic, uh, comic book style of, uh, of an image. And it's very forgiving for all the lines that are underneath because your eye, when it looks at something, is more drawn to like the bold color or the, the most graphic lines. It takes the image in all at once. It doesn't look for, you know, the underworkings immediately. People can definitely go and find it afterwards, but if you've got stamps or digi stamps that you just think, well, it seems like a good base, but there's just too much that's like still in the stamp, uh, don't be discouraged. Try this, try this technique of just blocking in your color really, really heavy and, uh, and, and just like blocking it in. You don't have to do much shading at all. 
and then going around it with a really thick black line. This is a good starting point for uh, figuring out how to customize the, the stamps that you have and make them your own, blend them into your own works, use your own themes, and, uh, and yeah, just go fully custom with them. Uh, Alice in Wonderland is a really big inspiration for a lot of art journalists. I see it all the time and it's just so fantastical and the story's so great, the, uh, the references are so available and uh, easy to interpret, so uh, you don't really need to stretch your imagination too far with, the, with, with creating an Alice in Wonderland, but yeah, I mean, just customize them. Try it. It'll open up so many new opportunities for you, so many new doors and avenues in, uh, in what you want to create and how you think you can do it. Uh, I use these digi stamps over and over and over and over again. And when I create them, I actually create them with that in mind, that I want to use them as the jumping off point. I want to use them so that there's enough there for me to get started, but so that I can change it up easily enough. This one's relatively more detailed than most. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on in the hair and especially with that big black bow. But you'll see here when I do the Mad Hatter, I just completely cover the bow up. And uh, you know, if you used black paint marker, you would never know it was under there. Um, but I used a Copic, so you can still kind of see the lines underneath. But uh, yeah, just, there's nothing wrong with making them your own. In fact, I encourage it. That's why I create them the way I do. There's, uh, there's enough to go off of, but they're not fully finished. And, uh, and I don't sit down and create like hundreds of digi stamps at a time. I create them as I need them and, uh, and as I want to use them. And then they share them uh, with everybody on my Etsy. Uh, there are a few times, if you're ever on my Facebook group, that I've uh, just released some images that I've drawn. Uh, I think for the swatches, I, I just released those because I, I really love for people to get a feel of how easy this is and how easy it is to incorporate it and uh, I know some people think well it's not my drawing so I don't really feel like it's my artwork if you customize them like this I mean you can take it to a place where I don't even recognize that it was my digi stamp <laughs> like some of them just look so different from how they started and that's all you like I mean I wouldn't sit there and say like well you didn't draw that I would say you're amazing you figured out a way to make it your own and I'm truly impressed because I've seen people use them already in ways that I hadn't thought of. I've seen people use these digi stamps and create things that are things that I would never create. And, uh, and that's what I love to see. That's why I share them. That's why I sell them. That's why, uh, that's why I create them. And uh, also because I like to cut out that step where I have to redraw, redraw them. <laughs> so yeah, this is the, uh, this is the Mad Hatter. Uh, I feel like uh, I don't really need to explain much else of, of what's going on in this video. I think you kind of get that you can have one, uh, one, one stamp, but you can make a thousand different things with it. So um, that's not to say don't go out and buy any more stamps. Obviously, feed your addiction if that's what you need to do. <laughs> but I want to encourage you guys to open up your mind and to uh, really dive into uh, creating stuff like this. To uh, pushing yourself and seeing if you can uh, stretch your imagination and just go for it. Play, make mistakes, that's the only way you're going to learn. Uh, reach for the stars, try and do something you really know won't work, and, uh, and if it does, be pleasantly surprised, and if it doesn't, keep going until you can make it work. Uh, that's what we all do here. So, yeah, I hope you're feeling encouraged. Uh, this is just about done, so I'm going to go through and show you close-ups of everything. If you liked what I did, uh, come back next Tuesday for Tag Tuesday, because I did the same thing with a different digi stamp in the store. Uh, one stamp, five different ways. And, uh, and yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And uh, have a fabulous day. Bye, everyone.